Jit Singh and today is the 24th of January 2014. In 1984, uh, in the time frame of about June, I was 18 years old. It was uh, actually uh, around that time we were getting ready to uh, give our uh, exams for pre-engineering, which is the equivalent of 12th grade in high school. Uh, I was in Chandigarh and uh, as I mentioned, I was getting ready to give my uh, 12th class exam. So, um, I, I, I guess in order to, to answer that question, uh, I need to give a little bit of context because the situation in Punjab leading up to June was actually already very tense. Um, there had been a number of incidents where members of a particular community, actually Hindus, uh, were being pulled out of buses uh, in various parts of Punjab and were being uh, murdered in cold blood. And um, the, the political and, and kind of public safety climate in Punjab was extremely tense and nobody actually um, had any inkling of what would transpire next. Uh, on the morning of 4th June, um, my, my father was uh, reading the newspaper and uh, he noticed that a lot of the newspaper was blanked out and um, uh, he, he came inside and um, you know was trying to understand what was going on. He turned, he turned on the news and there was nothing really being announced. Then we noticed that uh, there was a huge amount of military um, vehicles. These were um, these were trucks with soldiers in full combat gear. Uh, these were um, tanks on the back of, of uh, trailer trucks, uh, cannons and fully armed uh, jeeps uh, that were going through the streets. Uh, we, my father noticed this and he immediately called the family. So I went with my parents and my sister Actually, no, it was just with my parents to the roof of our house and we could see a huge um, contingent of military passing through the streets of Chandigarh. My father, who's uh, from the, who, who was a retired army officer, explained to me that this was called a flag march. And uh, a, fa a flag march is essentially um, a mechanism uh, the authorities or the government uses to demonstrate a show of strength to a locality. So he explained to me that something is likely um, something is likely afoot uh, because it was very very unusual to do a flag march in uh, a peaceful area uh, and a capital city like uh, like Chandigarh. That was the time when we realized that something was definitely amiss. But it wasn't until a couple of uh, probably a day later that news about the attack on Harmandar Sahib uh, started to filter through. Um, it was coming to us sporadically. There was not a lot of news media uh, that was allowed to cover it. There was a huge amount of censorship on newspapers and TV channels. But um, the news did get around and that's when we discovered that there had been a full-on attack on, on Darbar Sahib. Well, um, uh, some, some more uh, some more context is necessary. I, I come from a long line of, of army people. My great-grandfather, my grandfather and my father both served, all three of them served their entire lives uh, in the army. Uh, they were posted to difficult positions. They fought multiple wars for the country and and we were really, we grew up in a, in a very um, a very nationalistic environment to us um, the country uh, and the national fabric that surrounded the country was the essence of who we were and um, and having had uh, the, the the Indian army um, invade our and in, in that fashion It was a very difficult experience and uh, it was a feeling of being let down and uh, uh, 
it was uh, it was a very difficult thing to go through. Uh, I think it's not lost on anyone on what that represents for us as a community, um, what it represents from from a place of uh, of religious uh, significance, of peace, serenity, and to have that completely destroyed in this fashion uh, was uh, was devastating. In November 1984, I was in college. Uh, I, you know, we had we had had a difficult period uh, between 1984, between June of 1984, the passing of exams and starting our college lives. Uh, I was actually studying as a first year student in Punjab Engineering College in Chandigarh. Um, <clears throat> well, leading up to leading up to the violence, the first uh, piece of news that came out was. Uh, was uh, was the assassination of, of uh, Indira Gandhi, and on, on the one hand, uh, you know, something like an assassination had never happened on the shores of India. Uh, we had had a relatively stable political uh, environment in India leading up to that. There was obviously the usual uh, things associated with elections and uh, and and minor incidents with politics overall. But this was the first time that something as significant as the assassination. Uh, ha had happened um, right from the time that Mahatma Gandhi first got uh, got assassinated uh, in the early part of the country's uh, existence. So this was uh, this was a a very uh, conflicting incident because you know as a community that part of the world definitely held Indira Gandhi responsible for what had transpired uh, in the attack in Blue Star, and and simultaneously you know there was a foreboding that. With something like this happening, there's typically no turning back. It, 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 things get started. From the rest of the country towards uh, the Sikh community, uh, I could have never, I could have never uh, imagined that that's what would have happened. Uh, Sikhs have always been so intricately involved in the, the nation, um, its, its armed forces, its commerce, uh, its cultural, uh, its overall cultural identity, and. Uh, and this was uh, something that, that was beyond anybody's imagination. And uh, we started again, it was a repeat of, of, of June, where we started hearing about this uh, from, from a variety of different sources. Once again, there was a media blackout. Uh, a lot of information was not being shared through the normal channels like television and newspaper. And, uh, and again, all the information that we were getting uh, was because relatives uh, were in different places and we were trying to get to them, trying to find out if they were safe. And every time you called someone in one of these environments, you learned more about the horror that was transpiring in various parts of the country. Um, well, uh, yes, and... Um, a lot of them were affected uh, by the violence. We we saw um, we had we had family in Delhi that uh, that came under threat, um, and um, at that particular point in time, uh, nothing really happened. But the 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 most devastating incident for our family it, what happened actually uh, three or three or four years later in 1988, and. Uh, it transpired in, in Bidar, where my, my cousin, who was like a brother to me growing up, uh, was, uh, was killed in uh, Bidar, which is uh, in South India, uh, by some rioting um, miscreants. And, and it happened right about the time that I was actually leaving the country to, to come to India. Uh, I'm sorry, to come to the United States to pursue my graduate studies. Um, it, it literally happened uh, the day I left the country. He, he, he came under attack uh, a couple of thousand miles away. My brother Gurinder was um, a student in Bidar Engineering College uh, in South India. And uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of details surrounding this particular incident, but because he was just alone with a few of his friends, uh, they was they were living in an apartment uh, close to the campus, and uh, the only thing we found out was that he was he was they were chased out uh, of 
the apartment, they ran and they tried to save their own lives, but eventually uh, the rioting, the rioting, um, uh, the people who were rioting overcame them and, and eventually uh, they, they, they beat them to death. Uh, that uh, unfortunately has never come to light uh, either in in the 1984 riots broadly or uh, in this particular incident that happened in 1988. In, in 1984, yeah, everybody went back to living where they were living and they, they continued to, to deal with this. Um, it, it had settled down in most places. Uh, the, the connection to that place was, was lost after, after my, my brother was, was killed. Uh, you know, we, we, we spoke uh, a lot uh, as, as college students growing up. Uh, there was, uh, it changed, fundamentally changed the atmosphere in Punjab uh, right from the time of Blue Star. Uh, all of our, our exams were held with armed guards uh, outside. Uh, there was always uh, armed police patrolling. Um, we were under governor's rule. For the most part in those years with uh, a complete suspension of fundamental rights uh, any of us uh, were sub as, as, as youngsters were um, subject to being stopped searched and and uh, if it was up to the authorities we could have been uh, detained and um, and and so there was a general feeling of, of uh, a lack of safety Simultaneously, there was a resurgence in the Sikh identity to follow uh, certain Ravi Jathas around, just like you follow a rock band now. And, um, and, and you know, there was a, a feeling of, 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 uh, of oneness. A lot of my friends dropped their last names. I never used the last name other than Singh, but a lot of my friends who were using last names dropped their last names to, in, in favor of just using Khalsa to demonstrate their solidarity. Um, the, the Kesri turbans uh, became uh, a frequent, you know, you would see a lot more Kesri turbans in college in, in, and around town. And so um, that whole period was definitely impacted by these incidents because uh, it was a general uh, law and order situation with, with, without any fundamental rights and a lot of power in the hands of authorities and, um, and you know, all of the difficulties that come with that. So something that a lot of us talked about a lot and uh, and uh, you know at the end of the day unless you talk about it unless you you are trying to understand what causes these type of incidents to happen what causes the, the type of politics that drive this uh, you cannot bring yourself to reconcile uh, to uh, incidents like this that fundamentally destroy uh, the fabric of a culture and a nation. No, I have not. Uh, in my opinion, I, I, I believe that this was uh, very politically motivated. Um, at the end of the day, more often than not, when organized events like this happen, uh, where you know there were a series of, of uh, uh, anti-Hindu activities in Punjab, followed by Blue Star, followed by um, widespread organized violence against the Sikh community in, 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 uh, towards the end of the year, um, you have to imagine that there are greater forces at play. These are not spontaneous activities. So what I believe is that uh, a, a large part of this was very politically motivated. It was, it was not something that came about because there was animosity between communities in Punjab. Uh, you know, Punjab has actually been a very secular environment. Um, you know, we always talk about how well uh, various various cultures and religions have meshed out there. Uh, this was one of the most polarizing events that in the history history of that state.